In the previous chapter, we saw how to create, read, update, and delete records using a single model and a single database table. But what if we want to access information in the related tables? We could retrieve a record, let's say a page in our CMS, and then we'd be able to see its foreign key, which is subject ID. We could take that value and we could do a second query on the database to retrieve the related subject from the subjects table. That approach works just fine, and sometimes that's exactly what you will do but most of the time it's going to be really tedious and we're not going to want to have to go through all of those steps explicitly. To get the most benefit out of working with a relational database, it would be better if we could define the relationships between our models and therefore between our tables and then work with those relationships in an object-oriented way and let Rails do most of the behind-the-scenes work for us. After all, that's what Active Record did when we were working with a single model and a single table and sure enough, Active Record gives us something called associations that allow us to do that with our relationships. In this chapter, we'll be looking at active records associations, and we'll start out by looking at the general types of database relationships, and then see how Rails handles each one. There are three main relational database association types, one-to-one, one-to-many, and many-to-many. To help you visualize each one, let's use a concrete example. Imagine with me that there's a school, and this school has a bunch of classrooms in it, and each classroom gets assigned a teacher. The teachers don't move around, they stay in one classroom, and they teach four courses a day in that classroom. The students, however, change classrooms throughout the day as they move from course to course. Got that image in your head? Well, an example of a one-to-one -one relationship would be the relationship between the classroom and the teacher. A classroom has one teacher. The teacher is assigned to the classroom. The classroom, you could say, owns the teacher. That's why we say it has one teacher. It's the parent, while the teacher is considered the child. And as such, the foreign key goes on the teacher's table. So when we want to know what classroom the teacher belongs to, we can look at the teacher's foreign key to find out where it goes. An illustration of this would be very simple. We would just have the room and then the teacher. The teacher belongs to the room. And typically when you draw this kind of diagram, the foreign key goes in the item that's below because that's what's owned by the one above. Now some of you might be saying, well, wait a minute, why couldn't we do it the other way around? Why couldn't we assign the classroom to the teacher? You absolutely could do it the other way around and design your databases the other way. In that case, the foreign key would need to go on the classrooms table because the classroom would be being assigned to the teacher. So it really just depends on how you want to design things. But one of them has to own the relationship and the other one gets the foreign key. Let's take a look at the one-to-many association. A good example of this would be that a teacher teaches several courses. We said each teacher has four courses a day. So a teacher has many courses and each course belongs to a teacher. And therefore, the foreign key is going to go on the courses table. A diagram might look like this. The third type is many-to-many -many relationships, and a good example of this would be courses to students. There are many courses, and there are many students, and we need to keep track of some combination between them to know which students are in which courses at any one time. We could say that a course has many students, and that a student belongs to the course, or we could flip it around, and we could say that a student has many courses, and the course belongs to the student. It goes both ways. The foreign keys are going to be a little trickier because they can't go in either one of our tables. They're going to have to go in a join table that will make a relationship between them. Let me pause for a moment and explain to you a little bit more why. Let's imagine that we have our four courses and we also have four students. We want to keep track of which students are in which courses. Let's imagine that Michael is taking algebra, geometry, and statistics. How do we keep track of that? Well, we could put the foreign key in each course, algebra, have Michael's ID, geometry could have Michael's ID, statistics could have Michael's ID, and then we'd be able to say, oh, Michael is in this class. We could make the relationship that way. But then what about when Jennifer is also supposed to be in the class? Where do we put her foreign key? Do we replace Michael's with it? Do we create a whole nother column to be able to keep track of hers? What if there's 100 students in there? Do we have 100 columns just for keeping track of foreign keys? No, we don't. A much better solution is to create a join table down the middle the join table will just contain two pieces of data, the two foreign keys. So we'll have the foreign key for the course algebra, and we'll have the foreign key for the student Michael. That'll make the relationship between the two of them. So whenever we want to know the students that are taking algebra, we go to our join table, we find everything that has the algebra ID on one side, we get a list of IDs, and we can go and look up the corresponding students based on that. And vice versa, if we want to know which courses Michael is taking, we can go to the join table and find everything that has Michael's ID, and then use the other foreign key to be able to figure out which courses that it corresponds to. If this concept isn't already familiar to you, you might want to pause the movie here and just make sure that you have a clear understanding of why this is true before we go on. So now we've seen all three relationship types, one-to-one, -one, one to many and many-to-many. -many. It's no accident that I put quotes around has one, belongs to, and has many. 
Rails is going to use those same terms as method names. In fact, we're going to have classroom has one teacher. Teacher belongs to a classroom. Teacher has many courses. Course belongs to teacher. Course has and belongs to many students, to reflect both the fact that it has many and it belongs to many, and also student has and belongs to many courses. And as a footnote there, I put that this is only true when the join is simple, using simple foreign keys the way we described in the last example. A little later on, we'll also take a look at a more complex way to do many-to-many -many joins.